a very warm welcome. Thank you for joining us today for this ceremony, which marks the second anniversary of the date when the World Health Organization declared a pandemic. The last two years have been extraordinarily difficult and demanding for people across the whole world, and they have been tragic and devastating for so many. Through it all, we have been cared for by our remarkable health and social care workers who have put duty and commitment to care for patients above their own needs. This has come at a personal cost and has involved many sacrifices. Staff and volunteers have stepped up to the incredible challenges before them with great skill and determination. For those of us not involved, it is hard to imagine just what it takes for them to do the job they have done and are still doing. Our health and care workforce have carried on despite the exhaustion they have felt, and many have tragically paid the ultimate price. I am patron for NHS Charities Together, the independent national charity which was at the forefront of the COVID appeal. We raised £150 million to support the NHS, thanks to many generous donations, which show how much the public at large value the work done by health and care staff throughout the country. Over the last two years, donations have enabled us to help staff, volunteers and families during these challenging times. Working with the network of NHS charities to help the NHS and its partners go further for patients. Thanks to support from the public, we have reached every NHS trust and health board across the UK to help provide practical and emotional support for staff and wider support for patients and communities. Sadly, these challenges have not gone away and many people tell us that pressures are still very high. Our message to the health and care workforce is that we will continue to be there for you, whatever it takes. So today is about saying thank you, honoring and remembering sacrifice and saying we won't ever forget. Thank you all for being here today. These are the hands that touch us first. Feel your head, find the pulse, and make your bed. These are the hands that tap your back, test the skin, hold your arm, wheel the bin, change the bulb, fix the drip, pour the jug, replace your hip. These are the hands that fill the bath, mop the floor, flick the switch, soothe the saw, burn the swabs, give us a jab, throw out sharps, design the lab. And these are the hands that stop the leaks, empty the pan, wipe the pipes, Carry the can, clamp the veins, make the cast, log the dose, and touch us last. My name is Paul Nash and I'm leading the service today and I'd like to add my welcome to Lord Crisps, to everyone who is joining us here today at the beautiful National Memorial Arboretum and online on the day that marks two years since the pandemic began. It is fitting that the event is taking place here at the National Memorial Arboretum where there are plans already underway for a national living memorial to recognise service and sacrifice throughout the pandemic. 
the pandemic has had a devastating impact on so many people. Today, we are particularly acknowledging, honouring and remembering the losses and contributions of health and social care staff. And our thoughts are with everyone across the world who is facing devastating loss and tragedy as we meet today. We are joined today by NHS and social care staff from across the UK nations and from patients' representatives, GPs, nurses, ambulance staff, mental health staff and those providing social care support in our communities. These staff have cared for us during the difficult times and cared for each other. Their resilience has been an inspiration to us and we hugely value what they have done. But the cost and the loss has been felt on so many levels. They have made so many personal sacrifices, time away from families, friends and loved ones, and experiencing ongoing health problems. They have and continued to put their commitment to the care of others before themselves. They have sacrificed their mental and physical health. Many staff have sadly paid the ultimate sacrifice with their lives. We are here today to thank and honour those sacrifices, to say we won't ever forget. Would you all please now stand in preparation for our one minute silence. In a moment, a bell will signal the beginning of a minute silence, which will conclude with a performance from our tenor, Rhys Merion, singing Nella Fantasia. Our inspiring and honouring contributions will then be introduced by Rihanna and Rakesh, co-chaplains of Birmingham Women's and Children's Multi-Faith and Belief Chaplaincy Team, who themselves have been supporting bereaved families and colleagues of NHS staff during the past two years. Let us take a moment to prepare for our one minute silence.
Thank you, Reese, for that beautiful, dignifying conclusion to our minute silence. Before the staff choir of Birmingham Women's and Children's Hospital sings for us, we will hear from health staff on their reflections of working during COVID-19. And each reading will be delivered by a representative from the workforce. The readings include a poem by Kate Fox Robinson, who worked as a chaplain during the pandemic for the NHS first in the southwest in mental health services and then in acute hospitals in the northeast. This will be read by Dr. Habib Nakvi, who is a director of the NHS Grace and Health Observatory. This is followed by a testimonial from Jason Morrison, beg your pardon, from Jason Morris, a paramedic from the London Ambulance Service 
and especially commissioned poem for today, compiled by social care chaplain David Buck, based on, thought, on thoughts from those working in palliative care during the pandemic, and read by Emma Watts, who is a clinical nurse manager at Birmingham Mental Health Trust. It will conclude with the singing of a beautiful piece of music called The Rose by the staff and Friends Choir of Birmingham Women's and Children's Hospitals. Rolling Tide, Footnotes on Life by Kate Fox Robinson. The year came in like a rolling tide, in pounding waves that would not subside, so much so we could not fight it or hold it back. All we could actually do in the end was to take the surest and firmest position and stand resolutely in the sinking sand beneath our feet, letting the waves pummel us over and over, sometimes being swept by the waves full force tumbling, holding our breath until we resurfaced again, finding air and retaking our stand. The dawning realization, there is no boat coming to take us to a distant shore. Beyond the shore is not where we live out our lives. Our times are here in the frothing, crashing tumult of it all. But we are not alone. We are battered for shore but not alone. Looking down the shoreline, we notice distant dots, also swaying, also bending, also enduring, but still standing, as fierce as the waves which roll in behind them. I'm a clinical team leader in the London Ambulance Service, where I've worked frontline for the last 22 years, including during the pandemic. On behalf of my profession, it's a privilege for me to be here today to re represent all my colleagues who have died in service during COVID-19 and of all who have suffered different types of loss. Working during the, those days, we're completely alien and we were asking extraordinary things of staff. The commitment, the sense of duty from my colleagues have never wavered, but tragically, some paid the ultimate price while caring for London. Across the service, many of us have lost loved ones and colleagues and friends. I remember laughing and joking with a colleague as we kept morale up, only to hear he passed away days later. We are all still grieving and coming to terms with the loss losses like these. Today, we pay respect to all of our colleagues who have lost their lives because of COVID-19 and all the incredible sacrifices that they've made during this time. It's been an extraordinary two years and it's a tough to do justice to, to what we have been through. I asked my colleagues how they would sum things up in one word, relentless. Wearing masks impact our ability to communicate. It's made it hard to, to show empathy. We had to take the dying patients to hospital and leave their loved ones behind. And many patients were so young. I had a 40-year-old in cardiac arrest with no real medical history, who only two days before that they had... Apologies. ...had COVID. We worked so hard and full PPE, sweat pouring off us. I remember, always remember breaking the news to the family, telling them they could not go near them through the mask. It was something over the years I'd done so many times, but felt so different and difficult. I also worked with inside the control room and the, control, and the call volume were at levels I'd never seen before, 
the control staff, the control room staff are the unsung heroes, taking calls after calls, having to reassure callers we'll get to them as soon as we can. I was sometimes lost for how to support my colleagues who were physically and mentally exhausted. And this emotionally impact on staff is ongoing. We've been on autopilot for the last two years, but as things are slowly becoming normal, we are realizing just what impact the pandemic has had. I'm pleased to say today, we have some incredible support networks. We've formed amazing bonds with colleagues as a result. The fire service, the police, and others all helped us at our time of need, creating a new appreciation for each other's roles. When we work in the health service, we are part of a huge team and need to support each other. I'm proud of the way we all came together and I'm glad we can take a moment to reflect on what we've done through today. Our thoughts continue to be with all of those who have suffered loss and the friends and families of those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice whilst in service. It is important we honour them, give thanks and say that we won't ever forget. Love by David Buck. Some say there are three things that last forever, and I have sacrificed the greatest of all, love. I broke the golden rule, giving. I emptied, bringing light. I burnt out, caring. I wearied. Darkness came. I did not rest. I did not eat. Did not sleep. Arrived home late, time and again argued over nothing, binged, lost myself, fell out of love with myself. And how can you love others, care about anyone else when you do not do so for yourself? But I had no choice, could not say no. And some say there are three things that last forever. Two now remain, faith that we will better ourselves because of this and hope that love will be rebirthed.
before the link our breaths we will hear further personal experience and perspective from staff of the effect of caring during covid-19 this including a testimonial from oncology nurse felicity pass and poem read by professor chaklin tankley bent chief midwifery officer for england I would like to share my account of caring for a COVID patient who I have called Sue as she approached the end of her life. I wrote this to help me come to terms with what happened. Today could possibly be one of the most upsetting days of my nursing career, and I have worked in oncology for the last three and a half years. I offered my support to colleagues in other departments during the pandemic, but after today, I now doubt myself. as i feel emotionally drained i was alerted by a lovely nursing assistant that sue's saturations were low and she was on the highest amount of oxygen that can be given on the ward using my knowledge from caring for a previous patient i learned that if you manage to tilt the patient right onto their side it helps expand their lungs and makes breathing easier I spoke to Sue, uh, the sister in charge, and asked if she could point the medical team in the direction of Sue first. A lovely doctor reviewed Sue and suggested we give her some morphine, and following my suggestion, some levopromazine to assist with some agitation, as Sue was becoming anxious regarding her breathing. Sue previously had a discussion and expressed that she didn't want to be resuscitated or go to the intensive care unit. I sat with Sue whilst the morphine and levopromazine took effect. Sue asked me what was going to happen and asked me to be honest with her. How could I tell someone they were going to die? I held Sue's hand tight and explained that if her breathing gets any worse, Her body wouldn't be able to cope any more. She looked petrified. I held her hand and just looked down. Sue asked me, "What's it like when you die?" My first thought was to call for the chaplain. I replied and told Sue I didn't know, but I told her what I like to think happens. The following is my visualization. What? When you die. You don't really die. You meet all the people you've lost during your life. It's a much better place. No more pain or suffering. It's lovely and warm, and you can eat all the cake you want. So he smiled at my response. Just then, a lovely doctor came in, so we asked her what her interpretation of death was. She told us a patient she had cared for. a man who had a cardiac arrest but he was angry as they had managed to resuscitate him he explained to the doctor that after death it was like a warm blanket the lovely doctor probably one of the most compassionate doctors i had met had been updating the family the whole time she had arranged a zoom call so sue's family could say bye to their mum i can't even imagine the pain and heartbreak this caused them The pain and tears you could see in their eyes was absolutely heartbreaking. You could tell the family didn't want the call to end, but Sue had had enough. We gave Sue some more medication and to help ease her breathing. She kept telling me she was scared, but I promised Sue I would not leave her side. She said she was too scared to sleep. I didn't have an answer, but I said. If your body is telling you to go to sleep, go to sleep. All the while, knowing full well she would die if she did. The lovely doctor came into the room, and we sat either side of Sue, holding her hands, and we gave Sue some further medication. I didn't want Sue to be this anxious. Sue remained conscious until the end, possibly the first time I've ever, ever witnessed this. 
as she took her last breaths. I told her she was one of the most bravest ladies I had ever met. Throughout my whole time with Sue, she never shed a tear. After, I let, after her last breath, I let go of her hand and said goodbye. I'm used to people dying and talking about death, but this broke me. Never have I told someone their death was soon to come and a couple of hours later they take their last breath. Well, Sue, I felt honoured to care for you and will never forget the conversation we had. I hate you're up there now eating loads of cake. Rest in peace, you amazing lady. A poem by Kate Fox Robinson. The loss came thick and fast, death by a thousand tiny cuts. Or if by not this, then by the relentless sorrow manifest in the lives of our friends. Life-changing accidents, sudden death leaving families reeling in its wake. IVF again, cancer again, addiction again. The odds stacking up against us, seared as we are separated. Losses almost such that they defined us completely. Save, in the end, they did not. They could not. For silently, out of a banished corner, crawls kindness on her knees, inching forward into light and in her shadow, holding tightly onto her hand for safety emerges a tiny fierce creature we recognize as hope. Twelve wreaths will now be laid representing patients, the different caring professions, those disproportionately affected by COVID, and to reflect on global loss. During this time, the staff and friends choir of Birmingham Women's and Children's Hospital will sing again. This will be followed by a reading by Tin Diggle from Derby and Burton Hospitals Charity that gathers our thoughts for the future.
Making a Difference by Lem Sisse. We are shaking and breaking and waking in difference. We are quaking and taking and making a difference. We are working, observing, recording, researching, wherein we're conferring, subverting, referring. We're counting the minutes, the moments, the loss, redressing the balance, addressing the cost. We are citing and fighting. It's all in the writing. The spark is igniting. In dark, we are lightning. We are breaking the brackets. The fact is, the planets in rackets and rackets of rackets in brackets, the systems, the victims, the damning, the scamming, the biased predicting, the beating and banning. We teach through closed doors. When none listen, we hear. When heads turn away, we volunteer. To relentless censors, the damned and defenceless, our words are the action, the louder reaction. We count the cells in illness. We name the unnamed. We count the invisible. We make change. We work. We stand tall. We rise up to be counted. We work. Above all, we climb mountains. The skills we exchange, the breaking of chains, the actions sustained, the makers of change, we are shaking and breaking and waking in difference. We are quaking and taking and making a difference. Thank you, Tim. We're coming to the end of our service today. And I'd like to thank everybody who's taken part in this poignant moment of reflection and continue to give thanks for the ongoing sacrifices of NHS and care staff across the UK. And our thoughts today continue with all those around the world who are tragically facing devastating sadness and loss. We might have preferred bright sunshine today and being all warm and all cosy. I think it's really appropriate that it has rained and it has been cold and it has been miserable because that's what the past two years has been like. We hope we have captured and honoured the breadth and the depth of the multiple loss of our NHS care staff as they have continued to sacrificially serve us and seek to keep us safe. We know that many of you continue to be busier than ever caring for us all with an inevitable huge backlog of people needing help. We know you continue to put your patients before yourself, keeping going despite the exhaustion you feel. We come together today in solidarity, in love and support, and with a commitment that we will never forget the sacrifices that have been made by colleagues and ongoing ones that you make every single day. We will never, ever forget and we will be forever grateful. <laughs>